Welcome to the second day of the Milford Track. Today we travel from the Clinton Hut to the Mentaro Hut. This hike should take six to seven hours and for us, since we are stopping for photography along the way, even though it was raining, it took us about eight hours. Well, this video is just a little longer than our typical video. We just thought that it was really necessary to make this video longer to show all the beauty along the way and um, some of the misery. Hmm. Today's hike it has a distance of 16.5 kilometers or 10.25 miles. It's relatively easy, especially at the beginning, with an elevation gain of only 820 feet or 250 meters. I learned from my dad, who was a renowned photographer in his own right, that sometimes the enormity of nature required to have a reference point of a person in it so you can get a sense of scale. Here, I love how Guy used me walking in the foreground to give you an idea of the proportion of this forest and trail. We were walking quite early in the morning and it was overcast, so a lot of these pictures are taken in very dim light, which required high ISOs. And often that will make the pictures really grainy. So in post-processing, Guy used Topaz AI Clear, and this really cleans up highly granulated photos from high ISOs. When Guy shoots and there is not a lot of light, he always makes sure to tuck his elbows into his side and exhales before he takes the shot to help keep the camera still to help improve the sharpness of the photo. The other thing you can do when there's not a lot of light is to use a wider aperture. That would mean that it is a lower aperture number that you choose. And this gives you a smaller depth of field it does not require as much light to take a picture and have it still be sharp. For my videos, I used a DJI Osmo Action, which allowed me to take footage even in the rain and even underwater. It was perfect for this hike. For extra video stabilization, I did use a gimbal. Unfortunately, this gimbal was only rated to allow splashes of water. There was going to be a lot more water than splashes. I had to put the gimbal up once it started to rain. Guy and I both took art classes to be able to help us see good composition. And one of the things our art instructor told us was to be careful make sure that you did not have too much green in a picture because a green that was all throughout your picture could really take over your picture and it would not be as good. I don't think this rule applies to photography, at least not in, on the Milford track. To me, all these shades of green are just gorgeous. The trail continues along the Clinton River. It is absolutely gorgeous, so we recommend that you take every option along the trail out to the river. At least we did. The water is so clear, and the overhanging moss-clad trees are just mesmerizing every time you look at it.
Along the way, we did see a weka. We actually saw several of them. Weekas are about chicken-sized birds. It is a curious bird that is also flightless. Oh, I just want to take him home with me. That's all, just one little one. Surely they won't mind it in customs. Fortunately, the hikers in front of us stopped long enough to make sure that we saw the kias. Kias are a olive green parrot. We saw three of them in a tree. They are the only true alpine parrot in the world and are considered one of the most intelligent birds. They can be very mischievous. We heard that there was going to be two inches of rain this day. Eventually the heavy, heavy clouds hanging over our heads stopped showing us mercy and the rain began. It started off light and ended up raining really hard. I tried to hold my video camera under my chin or under the bill of my hat to try to keep the camera dry. It was mostly a losing battle. It was beautiful and really wet. The park ranger had said, just remember to embrace the rain and just walk through the puddles. She said, your feet are gonna get wet anyway. I couldn't help it. I had to pick my way along as I stepped trying to keep my feet dry, but it didn't take long before my toes began to squish in one shoe and then the other shoe, and then my feet were soaking wet. We came to a prominent spot along the trail called the bus stop. This is right before we get to a rock crossing area that was caused by an avalanche. And um, you have to wait here, as you might at a bus stop. If the water from the rains has made the rock fall impassable, fortunately for us, it had not rained that hard yet, and we were able to pick our way amongst the rocks and then across the bridge and across the rock fall without having to stop at the bus stop. At some point, the trail started getting steeper and steeper, and I have to say, with the 30-pound pack on my back, my legs were getting more and more tired. I had to bring out one pole and then two poles, and then I was still having trouble hiking. Looking back on it, I think we were actually really lucky that it rained. A lot of this track on this day was prettier in the rain because waterfalls Form when the rain starts to fall. We saw much more waterfalls because of the rain. So in some ways I did end up embracing the rain.
the park ranger at the Clinton Hut had said that at the worst she had had to wade through waist deep water. I prayed this would not happen to us. I loved all the stream crossings. Each bridge was a little bit different, so it was a little exciting each time we got to one. Then, at long last, there was no place to step but water. It was ankle deep and I did not embrace the water. I shuddered as I stepped and I felt my feet get totally drenched At some point, we emerged from the forest and the Clinton Valley opened up into a large prairie area with long grass and bushes replacing the dense trees. It was beautiful simultaneously uh, because of the rain, just um, a little miserable. In some places, the trail went into a tunnel formed by trees clinging tightly over the top of the pathway. It was gorgeous. One of the things about hiking in the rain is the rain tends to saturate the colors, so it made those greens pop even more. I just can't tell you how pretty it was. As we hiked along, the valley narrowed with granite rock walls lifting up on both sides. You could see waterfalls pouring down the sheer rock faces I knew the Mentaro hut was on the 13th mile, so as soon as I passed mile marker 13, I was sure that after every step, the Mentaro hut was gonna be around the next curve. Unfortunately, there were a lot of curves with a lot of disappointments. I found out much later that the Mentaro hut is actually much closer to the 14th mile marker than the 13th. We decided to edit out the little hissy fit I had when I saw this sign and in my mind, because I was so tired, I read the sign saying that it was two miles left to get to our hut when it was in fact only two minutes away. Thank goodness. The Mentaro hut is one hut with two different areas for sleeping and attached to it a kitchen. The beds have mattresses and you have to bring your sleeping bags. They have cook stoves, but you have to bring your cooking utensils and cookware, and food. They have flushing toilets and running cold water, but no showers. Some places along the path were lined by these big, gorgeous ferns. I swear it looked like some master gardener had planted them for our pleasure. When we finally made it to the Mentaro hut, we were greeted by the multicolored display of everyone hanging their rain gear out to dry because everyone was soaking wet. In this next clip, I am so tired that I'm having trouble putting words together. Take a listen. There's the Mentaro hut entrance. There are rooms on the bottom floor and rooms on the top floor. Down here on the bottom floor are stoves that can be used for heavy, we're heating up water for hot chocolate. Soon to be hot chocolate. So upstairs in the hut is our room. We may have upstairs neighbors up above us, but we have inhabited the bottom of this bunk room. I hope you have enjoyed this hike on day two. As we look back on this hike, even though the experience of it was quite miserable at the times, we only have fond memories. I had to go back to my diary to remember the miserable parts.
Okay. Alright, got your hand. Alright, yep, got 30. Okay. Alright, I want to try it again. I don't think it's working. Well, it's because I can't see it. I can't see what you're doing. Oh.